Restoration Bible Fellowship, coming to you live from North Las Vegas, Nevada. So glad that you're with me today, and can't wait to just get into the Word and talk about all the good things that God is doing. So glad that you're with me. Again, this is Dr. Stansberry with Restoration Bible Fellowship, and we're going to be talking today about spiritual sight. So come on with us, get your Bible, go to 2 Kings chapter 6, and let's get started. Can we pray? Father God, we thank you so much for your love, your mercy, power, grace, and your glory. I pray, God, that I will simply be your microphone, that you'll move Eric out of the way, and you'll just speak to your people and bless them through the word of God. And Father, for what we know you're going to do in and through your word, because you said your word never returns to you void, we are so grateful and thankful. And I pray, God, that you'll use this time together to strengthen, to help those who need help, and to build the kingdom of God. We're going to be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So if you have a Bible with you, go to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 13. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, that, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, and went out, there was an army surrounding the city and horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than with those who are them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike this people, I pray, pray with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So it was when they had come to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw they were where they were. They were inside Samaria. Now, this is a story that we're familiar with. If you don't know what's happened in the background, the king of, Sam of Syria, Ben-Hadad, was planning all these attacks on Israel, but every time he would plan a place of attack, something would happen. And God would tell Elisha, Elisha would tell the king of Israel, the king of Israel would say, hey, let's kind of prepare for this battle. And so the king at first, ben thought there was a spy in his midst, and he reached out and said, I want you to find out who the spy is, who's telling all my secrets. And finally one of his men said, uh, sir, it's not a man that is the spy, it's God telling the man of God, what the plan is. And so that's where the story picks up. So Benadad sends army after him to go get him, to take him out. And when that's where we're going to start. So the first thing I want you to realize is that we tend to see all problems as physical and temporal problems. When the, when the servant got up and saw all of the armies surrounding the house of Elisha, he was fearful because all he saw was the chariots and the armaments of men. This vision of what he saw, what he perceived to be real, instilled fear in his heart. Jeremiah chapter 1 and 8 says, Do not be afraid of those to whom I send you, for I will be with you to protect you, says the Lord. He never intended for any of us to be in fear of what we see. Ezekiel 2 and 6, But you, son of man, do not fear them, and do not fear their words, even though briars and thorns surround you, and you live among scorpions. Do not fear their words, do not be terrified of the looks they give you, for they are a rebellious house. We are living in a time where it seems like our world has jumped off the rails. And part of that becomes that we no longer see things as spiritual. We are solely focused on the physical. Every problem that we have in this country right now, whether it's race or economics or education, has more to do with the spiritual realm than, than it does with the temporal realm. If you don't believe it, one of the organizations that's right now trying to protest are open that they, they worship voodoo or the Santeria, uh, West African um, religions, and they call upon the spirits of the dead to help them. And, and this is documented. This is not anything I came up with on my own. This is well documented. And so a lot of what we are seeing now has a very spiritual aspect, but because we're only seeing it in the physical, it's causing people in the church to fear. It's causing people in the church to live in abject fear of something that is spiritual. 
So in Luke chapter 12 and verse 4, Jesus tells his disciples, Look, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body. And after that, have nothing more they can do. All the people in this world can do, honestly, is kill the body. They can't touch your soul. They can't touch your spirit. And But we in the church have got to stand firm and say we are fighting a spiritual warfare. And that's why Elisha has to pray, God, open his eyes. Now, I, I believe today that if God opened all of our eyes to see truly what was going on in the spirit, many of us, our hearts would probably truly fail us. Because when he opened the eyes and he saw that the Syrian army that had Elisha surrounded, they themselves were surrounded by horses and chariots of fire. Now, it's a very interesting thing that he uses horses and chariots of fire because in that day and age, there was no greater weapon given to an army because the horses and chariots could run down people on foot. It gave them greater mobility. And they were the, they were the cream, the top, the shock and awe, if you will, of the um, military world at that time. And yet God sends his horses and his chariots ready to defend Elisha. So that, that we need to understand that there is a spiritual warfare going on that most believers, I'm not talking about the world, most church believers are blissfully unaware of. We have so taken the supernatural out of the Bible. We've so taken the power of God out of the church. We don't realize that what we are doing, we are fighting against spiritual entities whose only goal is to drag as many of our souls away from God into hell. They know they can't defeat God. They know they'll never ascend to the mountain of, of, of His Highness. They'll never sit on His throne. So the only thing they have left to do is to destroy His creation. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12, For now we see in a mirror darkly, indirectly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I have been fully known. What he's saying, that we, what we see here, we kind of catch a glimpse every now and again to the other side. But we've never really truly seen what is going on behind the scenes. When you read in Psalms, when God is judging the sons of God, if you'll say, well, he's judging the men. No, he's actually judging spiritual entities that were in rebellion against him. You need to understand when he says he is the God among gods, he's not just making hyperbole. There are little G gods that run around spiritual entities that convince you and I that they are God, that they have some kind of power. And they've convinced people in other religions that they are to be worshipped and adored. And they don't realize that these, these deceiving spirits are going to bring them to a place that they can't get themselves out of. You see, until the church begins to once again stand firm and say we're taking the authority that we were given in Scripture to, do, to cast out spirits and to any high thing that exalts itself against the name of Jesus Christ. Paul tells us that we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, princes of the air. You say, well, Brother Eric, can you prove any of this? Glad you sure asked. In Daniel, when Daniel had been praying, it says after he made an end to praying, an angel came and said, the day you started praying, I was dispatched from heaven, but the prince of Persia stopped me, and Michael had to come help. You see, I believe that in every city, in every country, that there are spirits that have some kind of dominance. Now, God did say he held Israel back as his own possession. That's why Genesis chapter 30 is still very valid for all of us. He blesses them that blesses Israel, curses them that curses Israel. If you're trying to decide how you should vote this year, look at how they treat Israel. Just saying. So because we know that we're in a warfare, because we know that these spirits are out there, they, their job is to keep us unaware. If you've never read C.S. Lewis's The Screwtape Letters, I love it. It's a really good analogy a parable style of what spiritual warfare is about. It's a screw tape is Satan, and he's writing to his nephew. And he says this, It is funny how mortals always picture us putting things into their minds. In reality, our best work is done by keeping things out of their minds. So what's he saying? If I can keep you completely unconvinced that Satan is not real, sin is not real, that hell is not real, heaven is not real, God is not real, then I... If I can keep you from figuring all this out, I have a better shot at beating you. So what the spirit, what these spiritual entities are trying to do is to prevent you and I from ever realizing what's going on. 
that these uh, sudden racial tensions that are exploding and these sudden de- riots and murders and all of that are, are very, these spiritual puppet masters are pulling strings to get their operatives, to get their people to do these things. And yet the church sits back and goes, well, it is time we pray. This weekend in Washington, D.C., they had the you know, repentance uh, rallies, what I was calling it. It had an actual more perspective specific name with franklin graham and some of the uh, christian leaders telling our country you must get on your knees and come back to christ and then this morning or maybe yesterday on facebook i saw a picture of a satanist holding a thing that says no knee will bow i beg to differ my friend because the bible says that every knee will bow every tongue will confess every knee even your master will bow his knee before the throne of god and declare Jesus Christ is Lord. A lot of the injuries and wounds that we, and sicknesses that we see in our physical body have a spiritual many times connection. Most, if you looked a lot of the times in the miracles that Jesus did when he healed people, he, taught, he cast out a spirit. He cast out a spirit of infirmity. And, and although yeah, a lot of times sickness is physical, but a lot of the times when you have sicknesses that run in families, when you have a sickness that has no apparent cause, when you have things that are going in your life and you can't nail down why, it's because there's a spiritual entity at work in your family, in your life, that you've opened the door for him to come into. The only way to handle that is to shut that door and to keep that door closed. You've got to allow God to have reign in your life. If you're married, then God has to be first for the man and for the woman. If you're raising children, God has to be first in their life. Whatever you're doing, you've got to prove your loyalty or keep your loyalty to Yehovah through the, through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. So how do we, what do we do? So you say, well, brother, you're talking about the, Gehaz- the, uh, the uh, servant had different, well, what happened with the, with the Syrian army? When they came down, he says, make them blind. I do not believe they were completely blind because they were able to follow him. I don't think it was a physical blindness. I think it was a spiritual blindness that God had fixed their eyes that they could see, they could follow, but they couldn't perceive where they were, couldn't perceive where they were going, and they did not recognize him as Elisha. And I believe that in this day and age, we have people that are so blinded by these entities that they are easy to deceive and easy to follow any voice. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14 says this, So we are no longer to be children tossed back and forth by ways and carried about by every wind of teaching by the trickery of people who craftily carry out their deceitful schemes. That we are no longer to be children. That means, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to get into this word for yourself and begin to study. If you're following the joy boys that say everything is going to be okay, just say it, use the I am statements or have the right confession of faith. You're not understanding. In a battle, you can confess anything you want to confess, but you better draw your sword and fight. We have been given the weapons of warfare that are mighty through God that will pull down strongholds, that will break the things in your life that are preventing you from being all that God created you to be. The thoughts, the, the, the I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not cute enough, I'm not this enough. When you realize God created you for such a time as this to fall and do as he has asked. How do you find what he's asked you to do? You read the word of God. You get away from crafty teachers in Colossians 2 and 4. I say this so that no one will deceive you through arguments. Now listen, that sound reasonable. Have you ever discussed the Bible with somebody who are, who are not Christians and some of the things they will say to the human mind sounds reasonable? A lot of what cults will tell you will sound reasonable in your mind. You'll hear and go, oh, that makes kind of sense. Yeah, I get it, yeah. But if it is contrary to the word of God, I'll give you a good example. People say, well, a loving God, because we know that 1 John 
tells us that for God is love, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So beloved, let us love one another. And they'll use that scripture to justify all lifestyles, saying a loving God would not send a person to hell. And they are absolutely right. However, God has given you and I free will. And if we want to go to hell, we have to step over the blood of Jesus Christ to go there by declaring we're not going to follow you. We're not going to accept what you did because we're like the human race is a hard-headed little race who don't always tend to listen. As believers, as believers, we have to know the word of God. Second Peter tells us this in Second Peter chapter two verses one through three. But false prophets arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. These false teachers will infiltrate your midst with destructive heresies, even to the point of denying the master who brought who bought them. As a result, they will bring swift destruction on themselves. And many will follow their debauched lifestyles because of these false teachers. The way of truth will be slandered. And in their greed, they will exploit you with deceptive words. Their condemnation pronounced long ago is not sitting idly by. Their destruction is not asleep. Now, the, uh, they would talk later, I think it's in Jude, about that the angels who lost their former estate, who are held in reserve till judgment, which is mentioned in Revelation. Do you understand that God will judge the angels? He will judge these false teachers. There are teachers right now that will teach you that you know you, you can become a Christ. You can become an ascended master. You can become no you can't. We are so flawed as human beings, if you don't believe it, look at our history. We can't get along with each other. We can't treat the weakest among us with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Instead, what we will do, instead what we will say is we'll we'll take the caste system in India and go, Well, they were born, they deserve what they're getting. Sin is the root cause of what we're getting. Sin is the reason why many people are living in sickness, in debauchery, in poverty, and extreme wealth. You say, whoa, Brother Eric, what do you mean? If I'm prosperous, I'm walking in the Word of God. No, because if you're prosperous, that means the devil may not have an issue with you. So be careful where your prosperity comes. Because when God gives you prosperity, it doesn't come with the headaches of being prosperous. When the world gives it to you, you always got to live in fear that someone's going to take it from you. These were these guys were not they were spiritually blinded so they could not see. And that is the enemy's goal is to keep you and I spiritually blind. Remember when the apostle Paul said he felt when an eye laid hands on him, the scales fell from his eyes. Sometimes we got to be on the Damascus road. Lord, I can hear you a lot better now that you've got my eyes where they need to be. We are living in a time of history uh, that is unprecedented. If you if you look, you're seeing the book of Revelation in places being fulfilled. We're seeing things happen that have never happened before. And we've got an actual true peace accords kind of happening in Israel. Now they're calling for another peace conference in Israel. And the Bible says when they say peace and safety, then cometh sudden destruction. There are people today that are saying there is no rapture. Well, they can't prove that with Scripture, but okay, happy for them. There are those who says that Jesus Christ is never coming back. Not what the Bible says. You've got those who run and say that there is this and there is that. I'm telling you, church, you must get away from those who are teaching you false doctrine. You need to study the word of God for yourself. You need to pray and say, Lord, open up your word to me so that I will not be as a child. That's why Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I behaved as a child. But when I became an adult, I put away childish things. What are the childish things in the church? There is dissension. There is I, I should be in charge. There is the, the church is not functioning as it should. It is a body. If your body is at war with itself, it's called an autoimmune disease. That means your body attacks itself. And right now, the body of Christ is living as an autoimmune disease. We're fighting amongst ourselves, and the devil is sitting back and picking us off one at a time. But if the church ever gets united, when they were in one place and in one accord, the Holy Spirit poured out and 3,000 people got saved, what would happen if the church of the living God today, the remnant, stood up? and prayed with one voice and began to say, we declare the unadulterated pure word of God. What would happen in our families, in our churches, in our society if we were truly preaching the 
true word of God and stop playing around so we can keep people happy. I'm going to say this. Hell still burns hot. Sin is still sin. Jesus is still on the throne. After November 4th, I can guarantee you God is on the throne. Christ is on the throne. He's coming back, and he's not coming back with it for a church in bed with the world. He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. Gold City has a song that says, For much too long the church has been the underdog to the feet of men. God's building a church on the rise. It's been trampled on in the heat of the fight. The church is God in glorious light. Race across the enemy lines with holy banners raving high. We've got to become that church, that battleground, and not be spiritually blind. We need to be Elisha's servant and see the power of God and not be the Syrian army blinded through the power of, the, of spirits and God allowing us. He will allow you to believe a strong delusion. It's all about your loyalty to God and his kingdom, being a kingdom person. Pray with me, please. Father God, we thank you so much for your love and mercy, your power, grace, and your glory. I pray, God, that this word today will help someone, will bless them, will strengthen them, and help them to know that you are the great I am and that Jesus is coming back. And friend, if you're listening to this broadcast and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's simple. The Bible says, if you will believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was Lord and that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, that's all there is to it. I'm not going to give you some form prayer. I need you to, from your heart, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm on my way to hell. But I believe Jesus Christ is Lord and he paid my penalty. And I want to be a member of the kingdom of God. And God will take care of all the details. If you've gotten away from God, you can come back through Jesus Christ. Confess your sins and repent, and he'll accept you back as a son. Thank you for watching today. A couple of announcements. Bishop uh, Apostle R.E. Lee from the De Deliverance Churches Fellowship International Incorporated will be leading a uh, Pastors and Leaders Conference in, U in uh, Africa, October 16th through the 18th. And if you can, you can reach out to the dcfii.org uh, website for more information and maybe you want to join or just let him know or even gift the, his ministry as they reach out to Africa. If you have any questions or comments for me, please feel free to email me at pastorstansberry at gmail.com and I'll respond as quickly as I get the email. I also have my first solo project from Fuser Back called Expressions of My Heart that I'm giving away. Just simply email me and I will send you all the MP3 files for you to have and to share with your friends and family. I am so glad that you're with me today. I hope that this broadcast has been a blessing. Please share the broadcast. Also, I have a podcast that you can find on Google Play, on the Google Play Store, and uh, on Apple iTunes and Spotify. It's called Walking with the Word, uh, with me as your, as your host. Also, just feel free to comment on my YouTube channel, where when I do live sermons, when I preach at churches, uh, we record them and put them there. Uh, if you want to book me for any of your uh, services, I can sing or preach or play. Uh, just, again, email me at pastorstansberry at gmail.com. So until next week at 10 o'clock right here on Facebook Live, this is Dr. Eric Stansberry of Restoration Bible Fellowship saying go with God and he will go with you. And may grace and mercy be multiplied in your life. Have a great week.